Hi everyone, it's Heather. Welcome back into the Paper Castle. This is my eBay haul video for Thursday and Friday, May 30th and 31st. I did go out Saturday also, but that's going to have to be in a separate video or this one is going to be like an hour long and, and nobody wants to listen to me for that long. Um, so on Thursday there was a rummage sale at this Baptist church about 20 minutes away. This back in the day was probably one of the very first rummage sales that I ever ever went to um, and for that reason it's very near and dear to my heart. Over the years their prices have gotten a little higher um, than I would like but um, the people there are so wonderful and it's just a nice little sale so I will always always go back even if their prices get a little too out of control and I don't buy as much as I usually do, but that's okay. So, of course, I got there. It opened at 9. I got there at 7.30, I think. And, of course, who was already sitting in their lawn chairs in front of me? This nasty rummage sale lady and her mother. I'm like, ugh. Because, I mean, this is their area, this one town. Um, so... I was kind of expecting it. I didn't think they'd be there that early, but they were. Thankfully, they did not cause any drama with anybody except between themselves. Because the two of them got a little argument, which I thought was fascinating but <laughs> and fun to watch. But they didn't cause any drama with anybody else, which was good. So, um, this particular sale has some stuff inside at 9, but then they also have a whole bunch of stuff outside. Furniture, toys, um, some Christmas, like their overflow of Christmas, and then uh, artwork, books, CDs, DVDs, all that is outside. Um, plus electronics, uh, yard things, sporting goods, all that's outside. And you can shop... Um, as soon as they put it out, they just, you know, you have to find one of the workers there and they um, let you pay. So, um, I was bored. <laughs> like, really bored. I just didn't want to stay in there for an hour and a half and, you know, look at my shoes. Um, and I just wasn't really into reading right then and there that morning. So I started wandering around. And um, didn't find too much in the electronics or toys or any of that but I did end up going over to the books you know looking for Bibles and all that stuff and I started looking through the CDs and I did find well I initially found five that were really good that I got all excited about and then I opened them so um these are Solid Gold Soul, Solid Gold Soul. Yes, yeah, say that five times fast. CDs. They are from Time Life, as you can see right there. As I've said before, some of the Time Life sets they advertise on TV and stuff. They can really bring in um, good money, especially if you can find a whole set. Not all of them, so look them up. But a lot of them um, can be really profitable. So, I found these. I initially found five. I looked them up on my phone. The prices were good. I'm like, oh, fantastic. I'm just, you know, sell these is a lot. And then I opened them up. And three out of the five had no disc in them, which is one of my biggest pet peeves. That and Hallmark ornaments. So you have to, have to, have to check DVDs, CDs, and Hallmark ornament boxes because some of the Hallmark ornaments are so light that you know you just pick them up you throw them in your bag and then you get home and you open them and you realize it's a box full of flipping tissue paper which I have done on multiple occasions now I don't do it anymore because I've learned my lesson but um, it's happened to me a lot in the past so um, I was very bummed that those three did not have discs in them but uh, since I was bored, I figured, you know, how many other ones don't have discs in them? So there were two boxes full of CDs. So since I had nothing better to do, I went through every single CD in these boxes looking for ones that had no discs. And I think there were probably a 
dozen or more that didn't have discs. So I had my little pile of CDs and I took it over to one of the guys who was working and I said, just to let you know, I said, none of these have discs in them. And I said, and by the way, I went through all of them. So the rest that are in there, they do have discs. <laughs> he just kind of looked at me and goes, okay. He's like, um, thank you. I go, you're welcome. He's like, uh, did you put them in alphabetical order for me too? I go, no, 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 I wasn't that bored. I said, I had nothing to do standing over there in line, so I might as well be helpful. Because, you know, these people like bust their butts and I always feel guilty just standing there in line where they're all running around like, you know, busy bees around me and I'm doing nothing. So at least I could help a little bit. Um, the only other thing I bought outside other than the CDs, which were a dollar a piece, by the way, and I'll probably get, uh, I'm going to say 15 to 20 for those two, sell them together, I think, something like that. Um, I bought a Hot Tools 3 quarter inch curling iron, brand spanking new in the box, but that is mine. Um, cost me $5 in the store, they are usually 40 or 50 and that's what I have now, so that's my backup for when my other one, you know, blows up. Um, so then, church bells rang at 9 o'clock. So we all wandered in there, and um, I'll show you what I got. Not nearly as much as I usually get there, but I did okay. I think I spent uh, $38? Yeah, I spent $38 if you take away the curling iron, then I spent $33 bucks on everything. So I already spent two on the CDs. Um, got this. This is the only craft thing I got. Usually they have a lot of good needlework kits at this particular sale and this time it was like <clears throat> they had a bunch of totes full of glitter and glue and styrofoam and feathers. It was just like a mishmash of garbage. So this was the only good thing I found. This is a story belt, storybook felt stocking kit from Hobbycraft. It's got the angel, the tree, uh, Santa riding a reindeer. Brand new and sealed. They charged me two for this, which is a little pricey, but um, maybe 15 on that. It's not really worth all that much. Then, of course, I flew right to the perfume section, which is right near the craft section, and just kind of threw everything in my bag, and I sorted it out later. There were a few things I ended up putting back, but I'll show you what I got from that section. Uh, let's see. All right. So, first thing I got, I'm trying to remember how much all these things were. Hold on, I gotta look at my book. Okay. This, never seen or heard of this before, but this is you guys can see this here. It's going to focus. It's Nine Flags Shaving Cologne. And this is from, I guess this is the company that makes it, Panache in France. I don't know. But anyway, this sells pretty good. I paid a whopping 50 cents for this. I can't remember prices off the top of my head, but I'm thinking at least like 30, I think even though it's only a little over half full, it might be 60% in there. Then this, I have no idea because I can't find the same thing on eBay. So I'm probably going to start it at auction at like 10 bucks plus shipping and see if I get any bites. This is Monsieur Hubigant's Musk Aftershave Soother. Uh, it is about three quarters of the way full. Like I said, have no idea, but once at a rummage sale, I bought another um, bottle of this stuff that was similar, different manufacturer altogether, but it ended up selling for like, I don't know, over a hundred bucks. It was absolutely in incredible, and it was a much smaller bottle than this. So I don't think I'm going to do anywhere near that with this, but you never know. That's why I picked these things up. Then, this one I couldn't even read because 
the title is pretty much worn off right here. You can barely see that there's black writing here, which that's not going to focus because there's stuff in the background. But it's just a little rollerball of perfume. Found out, I could barely see it, but I could kind of make things out. It's called Always and Forever by Jessica McClintock. I paid 75 cents for this, maybe uh, 10 to 15, I think, probably 10. Then this one, I got to see where this goes. This is a vintage bottle of Christian Dior. Come on, you can do it. There we go. Christian Dior Eau Sauvage Aftershave. It's about 85% full. It is a spray. It cost me a dollar. And some of these are doing pretty well on eBay. I can't find the exact size, a 3.4 ounce of this on eBay. So I think I put it up for auction at 50 or 60 just to see if I'd get any watchers and what happens. So we'll have to wait and see. I might have to lower the price on that. I don't know. If it was the cologne, it would definitely sell for probably a lot more than that. But it's not. So I don't know how the aftershave sells. Um, and then I scored with some vintage Jean Nate. I got a one ounce cologne spray for oh, 50 cents. And the powder was a dollar. The cologne, I think, is like 20 to 30, I think. And the powder, which I've sold before, um, is an easy 50 60 bucks plus shipping so really really happy to find that so made all my money back already with the Jean Nate um, actually the first Jean Nate powder I found was at a little teeny tiny rummage sale about 35 minutes from here in a tiny little Methodist church uh, and I'm actually going to that one again tomorrow I'm really excited because I always find good stuff there and as opposed to this rummage sale, where they hardly ever advertise it, I have no idea how I ever found this one. Um, they must have advertised it years ago, but now they don't. It's just kind of the last Thursday of the month. And to make sure, I always email the church and I double check with them. And um, I did that this year. And I also thank them for all the hard work they do and, and for how wonderful all their workers are because uh, they always you know do such a great job but this other tiny one up in um, North Jersey they advertise the crap <laughs> of their sale they were on Facebook like three months ago and on Saturday or Sunday night my phone was blowing up with like picture after picture after picture after picture after picture they were posted on Facebook so I have to get there really early tomorrow because I already saw like three things off the bat and they usually charge an average of like a buck an item. Um, I already saw like $100 laying on the table. I'm like, I got to get there and get there fast and run in the door and get what I want and then find more good stuff. So it's a very um, hidden little gem up there. I love that place. So I actually have four rummage sales to go to this week you guys four I have that one tomorrow I have two on Friday one in the morning and one at night and then uh, one on Saturday morning that's an outdoor one and thankfully it will not be raining so um, <laughs> I have to get to work and I have to stay current with these videos and oh my god you should see my dining room and my family room and it's just it's a thrift store alright enough with the babbling uh, one more thing I found in the like health and beauty section the second time around was I found this Uma wellness oil trial kit. It's 25 cents. It was in a plastic bag that had that you know adhesive, so I could easily take it out of the bag and look at it. It's got these four little bottles in it, and there's another one on eBay and on their website that has five bottles 
And that one's consistently selling for like 38 to like 40 something dollars. Are you kidding me? So, and this one though, it, it stinks. I mean, you can really smell this oil. Something has tea tree oil in it, I think, because I can't stand the smell of that, and that's what this all smells like. I'm really not into the whole essential oil craze, but if I can get rid of that for like 20, 30 bucks with a 25 cent investment, I will be very happy. Um, I found one Ray Dunn piece. Only bought it because it was 25 cents. This is not old Ray Dunn. This is new Ray Dunn. Um, I know Ray Dunn stuff is all over the place and people go not so crazy over it, but all the stuff that is currently in like Marshall's, TJ Maxx, Home Goods, uh, that's just flooding the market, most of it is not worth uh, very much. You need to find the old Ray Dunn stuff. Uh, you can look at completed listings on eBay to get an idea of what's old as opposed to new. Uh, I know the two pieces that I sold a couple years ago, I sold a teapot and a creamer for, I paid $350, I think, for total for the pair, and I sold them for like $425. Um, that didn't even have her name on the bottom. All it said on the bottom was it had a big M and it said magenta, and I found out through research that they were actually Ray Dunn pieces. So that's one way that you can identify whether or not it's an older Ray Dunn piece. However, not all things marked with a big M and say magenta are necessarily Ray Dunn. They do do uh, other things. So if you find a piece and you're like, oh, it's Ray Dunn, not necessarily. Just, you know, check on your phone before you make that investment. But this is just a little pencil cup, maybe 10 bucks plus shipping. But still, not bad for 25 cents. Then I bought a glass that desperately needs to be washed. This says New Belgian Brewing. Uh, this is their 25th anniversary glass. I bought it because it was like 25 cents and I can sell it for probably 10 plus shipping. Then in the kind of knick-knacky section, picked up a couple of, well this should have been in the Christmas, but I don't think they realized it was a Christmas ornament. This is a Christmas crinkles, spelled with a K, K-R-I-N-K-L-E-S, from Department 56. Oh, duh, it's right here, crinkles. <laughs> anyway, there it is. Um, I've bought and sold a lot of these in the past. This one I think was part of a three-piece set called Three French Hens, because the little hen's wearing a beret. Uh, but this is only one, and I think there might be... I don't know if there's a leaf missing here or not. Eh, it looks okay. Anyway, um, this is just by itself. Actually, maybe it's not part of a set, because it has its own tag on it. But it says $16.50. I paid... How much did I pay for this? Uh, a dollar. So maybe... 10 to 15 plus shipping on that. Then I got this teeny tiny little Beatrix Potter Tom Kitten figurine. Focus. There we go. Um, he was 50 cents? Oh no, he was a dollar, really? Anyway, it says 1993 FW and Company, which I believe is Frederick Warren or Frederick Warner or something like that. Um, can't find this exact figurine anywhere on eBay. I'm hoping to get at least 10 plus shipping, but I have no idea if something's missing from here or if you're supposed to put something in there. So if anybody, uh, bleh, if anybody knows, please let me know. I tried staying a pencil in there, but that doesn't work. <laughs> so, unless you kind of put it the opposite way with the eraser down, but then, you know, you risk, you know, falling on it and impaling yourself if you're klutzy like I am and probably you know, trip and fall on it, and yeah, you know, then I'm in the emergency room. So, I won't be putting a pencil in there, but if anybody else has an idea, any idea, please let me know. Uh, then I went to, um, well, another kind of part of their knick-knack section, and I got a bunch of Mexican pottery. 
these are my three new friends. So these are all from Tonala, Mexico, T-O-N-A-L-A. -A. One of them's not marked, but you know they're from Tonala just because of the um, style. This is my little chicken or rooster friend, and he is marked uh, right here. He says Arandi, Tonala, Mexico, and then a little bird right there. I paid I paid three for him. Hopefully make 15 to 20 plus shipping. Then I got this lovely toucan. He is the one that's only marked Mexico, but that's okay. Um and I think this might be the artist's initials right here below Mexico. That one was also three dollars. So maybe fifteen to twenty on him. And then this big honking quail partridge figurine, whatever you would like to call it. I'll call it a partridge because of the partridge family. But um I'll also put quail in the title. But again, this one says Arandi Tanala, Mexico on the bottom with a little tag. So this one I paid four for, I believe. Yes. So I'm going to probably, hopefully get at least 25 for him. We'll have to see. I'm probably going to put all of them up at auction because they do seem to have a bit more detail to them as far as the painting goes than uh, a lot of the other ones up on eBay. So we'll have to see. And then, keeping with the Mexican pottery theme, I also got a pair of salt pepper shakers. This one, I'm assuming, is the pepper because it's darker on the top. And they've got the little butterflies. They have the stoppers in the bottom. They do say Mexico right here. They also say K-E. Whoops. Sorry, guys. I didn't realize I wasn't focusing. They also say K-E right here. It's hard to see. K-E is for Ken Edwards, if you ever find Tanala pottery. Uh, so maybe, I think I spent a buck on those. I'm trying to find them. Yeah, a buck on those, maybe 10 to 15 plus shipping on that set. And then the last two things I bought were these really cool coasters. These are from Think Geek, which is a fantastic store. I love that store. They have the coolest stuff in there. Um, I think they have a cat. They have an online store. They might still have a catalog. I'm not sure. But then they also have actual brick and mortar stores in certain places. And I've been in a couple of them, and they're great. They're so much fun. Um, these were somewhere two bucks. And what these are are glowing coasters. You've got radium, thorium, uranium, and plutonium. They still have their um, testing things, testing strip things in the back. So the batteries are still good. And I found a picture of these online. Whoops. Sorry guys, had to restart. Found a picture of these online. And they're really cool. They light up like, one lights up bright red, then green, then blue, then one is yellow. Um, these sell for about, I think, 25 plus shipping? Something like that. And I just dropped the instructions on the ground. And then, last but not least, and I have no idea what this piece is going to do. So this is definitely going to go up for auction. I found this pottery piece. At first I looked at it, I was like, meh. You know, kind of looks like a big old pop tart on the top. But um, it's terracotta color inside. Then I opened it, saw it has this little matching ashtray. It's very mid-century with this little wooden bottom. It has a really old label here that says made in Italy. And then on the bottom of the ashtray, it has a number and also says Italy. I think that this is, um, what is it, Bissoni Pottery? I think I have the name right. I'm not sure. 
If not, I'll put it, you know, in the captions. But uh, what I think this is, is a cigarette box with a matching ashtray. Because, you know, back in the 50s and 60s, everybody needed their own giant big box of cigarettes on the table. So I think that's what that is. Um, the prices are kind of all over the place for those. I'm thinking maybe at least 50. I can't find another one with a wooden with a wood bottom on it, so I don't know. I'm going to probably start the auction at 50 and see where it goes from there. But some of them can go for over 100. So keep your eyes out for vintage Italian cigarette boxes. All right, so that is Thursday. Yes. All right. Trying to hurry up here, guys. Friday, there was, wasn't too much going on. There was a little neighborhood sale and then two single sales after that. And I thought that was it. But then on the way to the last, you know, single family sale, I found another little neighborhood sale. So I did better than I thought. Um, it turns out, it was a very funny story. I was walking out of one person's driveway and I passed this guy and he stopped me and said hello to me. And I recognized him from the giant Super Bowl Catholic school sale and we're talking I'm like oh hey how you doing because he was right in front of me in line so he got there like 5 30 I got there like five minutes to six so we were right next to each other in line we'd been talking for a little while so he sees me again you know we say hello and all of a sudden he looks at me he goes do you have a YouTube channel I'm like uh what <laughs> like um yeah and he goes I knew that was you he goes, I knew that was you. He goes, I saw your haul. He goes, I thought it was you before. He goes, but then I saw your haul from the Catholic school. And he goes, I knew it was you. I'm like, oh, okay. And this guy, you know, he's a young guy. And I'm like, really? You're watching my videos? He's like, oh, yeah, you got some great stuff. And I'm like, uh, okay, thanks. <laughs> so, really nice guy named Francisco. So, hi, Francisco, if you're watching. Shout out to you. Shout out to him. Um, this is like the second person now that's recognized me in the past month at sales when they don't even know what I look like, either from what I buy or, um, the stories I tell. So I just think that's funny. Um, all right. So at those sales in the neighborhood, I picked up for $5, this set of Pottery Barn reindeer napkin rings, brand spanking new in the box focus. Um, on replacements.com, they would like pretty much 10 bucks a piece for each one of these, except Rudolph, which they want like 14 for. So I'm not going to make that much with these. I'm only going to make maybe 25, 30 bucks plus shipping on those because uh, the prices at replacements are bonkers. Uh, then at another sale in that neighborhood, I got this guy just because I love his face. Found out he is a Swedish art glass piece. You can actually see his face better when I turn him around. But he is a lion from the 70s. He is Sweden Royal Krona, um, probably by Matt Jonasson. I'll try and put his name down there for you guys. I've sold his stuff before. Um, maybe get like 20 plus shipping on him. I paid three. I don't know if I mentioned that. Then... For $5 at another house in that neighborhood, I got this piece of Polish stoneware. She had three pieces. I should have probably bought all of them. There was another piece I was like really detailed that I should have gotten, but I just didn't want to spend all that money. I got this piece just because of the strawberries. A lot of people like strawberries. So we shall see. I'm hoping at least 25 to 30 on that. Plus shipping. And then the last two things I bought in that neighborhood were this set of canisters these old wooden canisters they all nest together which is fabulous and they also came with matching salt and pepper set which I had never seen with one of these wooden canister sets before Paid two bucks for the whole set, but these really aren't worth all that much. If I get 20 plus shipping, I'll be happy because they're in decent shape. This one says tea. This one says coffee. 
And this one is sugar. Okay. There we go. So that's that. And probably the best thing I got at the neighborhood sale was this woman was selling a bunch of like, you know, primitive style items. And I saw this. Let me lay it on the table so you can see it better. This big, tall, cast iron thing. I had no idea what it was at first glance. But looked it up and realized that this is a kind of whitewashed cast iron pineapple doorstop. Because obviously, who does not need a whitewashed cast iron pineapple doorstop in their life? I mean, come on, people. Who can't live without this? I don't know. Anyway, I bought it because on the back, right here, it says Virginia Metal, Metal bleh, Virginia Metal Crafters. There we go. Very good name. Sold their stuff before. I paid five bucks for this. The last one on eBay just sold for, I believe, eighty with free shipping. And I think I might be able to get this sucker in a medium flat rate box. So that was a very good purchase. So. Be on the lookout for cast iron whitewashed pineapple doorstops. Speaking of which, <laughs> when looking for obscure things, I now have a new like goal that I'm looking for. I'm never going to find it, but I just, it's kind of a joke and I think it's funny. And my husband and I joke around about it all the time. I was watching Antiques Roadshow one night and some woman came in with a naked lady figurine. And the guy who was appraising it looked at her and he's like, <laughs> he goes, oh, naked women. He goes, naked women sell. He goes, the three best things that sell in the antique market? He goes, elephants, naked women, and cats. So he's like, so if you can find a naked woman riding an elephant holding a cat, he's like, you're gold. <laughs> so that, you guys, is my new, like, holy grail. I'm looking for a naked lady riding an elephant holding a cat figurine. So if any of you guys find it, let me know. Um, and, and you've probably got, you know, a million dollars on your hands. Okay. Keep this going so this isn't, you know, an hour. Um, then I went to a single family sale. For a buck I picked up this George Bulldogs hat. This is from uh, Top of the World. Right here. I can't figure out if it's used or not. It looks to me like it's a little bit discolored here. So, I don't know, but I'll still make money on it. Um, maybe 15 to 20, we'll see. I might put it up at auction because I can't find another one like that one. Then, went to another single family sale and got jewelry. And I know, I don't even normally get jewelry. But most of this, I'm actually keeping for myself. Um, got this little pair of earrings just because I th thought they were pretty and they're sparkly and I like sparkly. Come on, there we go. So those are those. They were a buck. Um, this skull bracelet, this is based on a Shambhala style bracelet. Um, this macrame has these metal skulls with the rhinestone eyes. Maybe 10 to 12. Uh, I think it's like 12 or 13 with free shipping on these. Because I've seen them. And then... I was going to sell these, but now I'm going to keep them for me. Because they make fabulous Halloween earrings. And if any of you have watched my channel consistently, you know that I am an absolute Halloween nut. So these are Betsy Johnson skull earrings. They've got little crowns. They're really cool. So these will be my October earrings, and they also cost me a buck. Probably could have sold them on eBay for like 10. And then this little guy, I don't know, can't find a name on it, but it also has two little skulls. I'm not normally into skulls other than, you know, Halloween. So I'll only bring this guy out in October. But he actually fits me, which is amazing because I have like absolutely freakishly small wrists. I have to still squeeze him more so that... He won't slide around, but he does fit me. And then the other thing I bought for myself, maybe this is why I shouldn't buy jewelry, because I keep it all. 
My kids and I have this ongoing joke about emus because I just love that word. Because <laughs> emu is just a fun word to say. So whenever we see one on TV or whatever, I'm like, look at emu. My kids are like, ugh. <laughs> so I found a little emu charm to stick on my keys. And I love him. So my daughter just looked at me and she's like, what is, what is wrong with you, really? <laughs> Alright, last but not least, I went to another neighbor neighborhood sale. Didn't find much. I did find a little talking Christmas tree, like an animated Christmas tree. It's eyes open and shut and it's supposed to sing. What was he called? He was... I don't even think I wrote him down. Um, but he's in my garage because, unfortunately, the battery compartment is completely corroded and he doesn't work. So that was two bucks down the drain. I'm thinking about taking my own screwdriver to places now because this happens to me a lot when I can't open the battery compartment. But fiber optic trees and talking animated Christmas trees do really well on eBay. All those animated things, you know, are great. Even the, you know, the singing fish on the wall sold a bunch of those too. So look for those. And then last but not least is this anthropology plate that was under a stack of other plates that this lady had. And as I saw the border under all the other plates. I'm like, is that anthropology? It might be. So I picked up all the other plates and there was this sweet little cat with a mouse. Turned it over and it does say Natalie Leet or Lette or however the heck you say her name. But I knew it was anthropology. She wanted a buck. I paid her a buck and two have sold on eBay. One sold at auction for 31 and the other one sold for 150. So who knows? I might slap this sucker up there for 75 at auction and see if I get any bites. So that's it guys. Still, this was still longer than I planned it to be. I'm sorry, but I will be back to show you Saturday's haul, um, which was also good. So thanks for watching everyone and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.